also Dora Day. The Dora Awards are Toronto's professional theatre awards and we've won quite a few over the years. This year we have 13 nominations in seven categories. Our building was built in the 1880s and originally it was used to house the horses that pulled the streetcars through the early days of Toronto. Later it became a power station for Toronto Transit. And then it sat derelict for a while, and in 1978, we took over the building and renovated it as a theater. This is one of the posters for one of the shows in our season, El Numero Uno. Nice to meet you. We're on our way to the second floor lobby and the main theater. So I'm sitting at the sound console at the back of our main theater. And as you look, you can see that it's a 460-seat theater, a big space for big productions. So this is the main stage scene from the balcony. You can see it's a great old brick space, industrial looking. It's quiet now, but it'll be filled with kids who will be watching The Princess and the Handmaiden, which is the first show that we're going to do next season. This is the control booth, and this is the place that the stage manager of the show sits and watches so that she or he can call all of the cues that happen on stage. You can see a group of drama school students down there on their first day of summer drama school. In the summer we turn the building over to the drama school so that we can run an eight-week program of uh, different camps for different ages. So this extraordinary, it looks like a great big old-fashioned telephone exchange, this is the switching panel to control all of the lights in our main stage. We're in the lighting control booth. And this baby is pretty old. It's so old, in fact, that we're running out of people in the city who know how to repair it or even work with it. We have to replace it someday because it's not very energy efficient, but it sure is cool, isn't it? Okay, so follow me up onto the stage. Oops. Uh, this is what the theater looks like if you're an actor on the stage. You can see it's a big house, but it's also pretty intimate. The seats aren't really very far away. But uh, I wanted to tell you that next season we're going to move this stage forward for a couple of our plays. We're going to take it right out six more rows, take the seats over here, put them over there, and we're going to do theater in the round, which is something that we haven't done in this theater, I think, in the whole history of being here. So uh, two of our plays, El Numero Uno and The Monster Under the Bed, will be performed in that really intimate theater in the round setting. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Have a good Hi. first day. So when an actor leaves the stage, they go to the green room. And the green room is where actors wait to make their entrances and exits. There's a lot of stories that have circulated about why every theater has a green room. One of the theories is that the green room is where the flowers for the actors on opening night were kept. There's another theory that because theaters were outdoors originally, the actors would wait on the grass, the green grass, outside the theater to make their entrances or to exit to when they were finished. In our green room, we have had a tradition of displaying some of the puzzles that the actors have completed for every show. For every show, they find a puzzle that is thematically connected to the play. Uh, when they're not on stage, they work on completing the puzzle. When they're done, the shop put a frame around it, everybody signs it, and we display them. We've been doing this for over 30 years, so we can't display all of them. It's nice to uh, remember who was in the shows and what shows we've done in the past. So, let's go to the dressing rooms. Dressing rooms are so glamorous, aren't they? But ours are actually really small and they get really hot when all the lights are on. So our prop shop and our scene shop and our costume shop are all housed in the basement. Originally this building didn't have one, but when we renovated it, we poured a concrete floor. It's below the level of the lake, so we have to have pumps to make sure it doesn't get filled with water. But it's a great space to allow us to build everything that we need for a production. So props are anything that actors use with their hands. So that could be anything from a sword used in Romeo and Juliet to uh, creating the Who's from Whoville and our production of Susicle. That might even be uh, the flying monkeys from The Wizard of Oz. All of them are things that are built here in our prop shop and we've been doing that for 44 years. Wardrobe is a magical place. There's all kinds of crowns and masks and costumes of every kind that you could possibly imagine. This is Ina. She works here. 
It's a pretty crowded space, not a lot of room, but you know, we do the best that we can with what we've got, and over the years, we've done some really beautiful, extraordinary costumes. Uh, this is some of them. Paper bag for the paper bag dress for the paper bag princess. This was in Charlie Brown. That was the Wicked Witch of the West in our production of The Wizard of Oz. We actually even made this wig. Some of the hats and masks and various uh, accoutrements from many, many years of being here. Sometimes there are as many as eight people working in this small space. Every year we use all kinds of bits and pieces and we try not to throw anything away so we recycle. Uh, hats, gloves, shoes, zippers, buttons, all kinds of bits of material and although we don't have a lot of storage room we use every inch of space that we've got and put everything in boxes, label it and hang on to it for another year. This is the scenery shop. So this is where we build the sets for all of our productions. We work with wood and steel and plastic and whatever is required by the set designer for the production. We've got everything you could want in drills and saws and welding equipment, uh, you name it. This can get pretty filled with scenery. It's, we have to build everything in little pieces and then load it up onto the stage. This is a plan for the theater and the round that we're going to do next season. I mentioned it earlier. These seats were here, but we moved them up onto the stage and this is the 24-foot square platform that will be the stage for El Numero Uno and the monster under the bed. This is another poster from next season, The Princess and the Handmaiden. It's a brand new musical by Leslie Arden. This way. So our studio theater is a 115-seat performance space, but it's also our rehearsal hall, and we use it as a classroom for our drama school. Okay. So uh, this morning, uh, we're still missing some of our, our students, but they'll be coming in. This is one of the beautiful pieces for our well project. This was made by students at Art City in St. Jamestown. It was a technique with Chinese brush painting. They worked with a mentor for a while and then this was put together as a single piece. It's just beautiful. And this is a poster for the monster under the bed, one of the plays that we're doing in the round next season. We're going to end the season with Hannah's Suitcase. It's an extraordinary true story, and if you haven't seen our production of it before, I hope next season you'll catch it. So thanks for taking this video tour of the building with us. I hope sometime soon you'll visit us in person to see one of our plays or come to our drama school or any one of the educational programs that we operate. If you want more information, check us out at lktyp.ca. Thanks. All right, Dora, let's go.